So in today's very brief khutbah, insha'Allah ta'ala, I'm going to analyze what is taqwa and how does siyam get us to achieve taqwa. Taqwa, to put it very simply, is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that motivates us to do good deeds and prevents us from doing evil deeds. Taqwa is an inner concept, it's an inner state of mind. It is a paradigm, it's a vision, it's a way you look at the world. When you have taqwa, you are always conscious that I need to do as much good as I can. And I need to withdraw or restrict from any evil. So this is what taqwa is. How then does siyam bring about taqwa? What are the mechanisms via which siyam helps you attain taqwa? Much can be said. Point number one, brothers and sisters. Point number one. The essence of taqwa is to be aware of Allah, to be conscious of Allah. Okay? What happens when we're fasting? When we're fasting, we are training our inner consciousness. When we're fasting, nobody watches us in the privacy of our rooms, in the privacy of our kitchens. We can drink, we can eat, but we know Allah is watching. So siyam trains our consciousness of Allah. This is the literally mental gymnasium we're going and working out every single day to build our consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number two, a part of taqwa is to minimize sin. And to minimize sin means your desire, your willpower has to be strong. What happens in siyam? You are exercising your willpower. We're all thirsty right now. We all have caffeine withdrawal right now. We're all hungry right now. But our will is stronger than our hunger. Our will is stronger than our desire to break our fast. And so once again, in the gym of Ramadan, we are working out our willpower. We are strengthening our willpower. If we can stop from eating and drinking in the daytime right now, Wallahi, we can stop our sins when the month is over. If we can develop our willpower now to not drink, and it's hot outside and we're thirsty and we're going to work. Surely you and I can give up smoking, drinking, other haram habits. We can give up these things. We are showing Allah we can give up the halal. Surely we can give up the haram. That is the second mechanism of achieving taqwa. Number three, when it comes to taqwa. Taqwa, one of the main thamara or fruits, is that we draw closer to Allah with our rituals. Our salah, our dua, our dhikr, our Quran. Well, guess what Ramadan does? Ramadan, it causes all of us to raise the bar of our rituals. Every one of us, we pray a little bit more. We give charity. We read Quran. We do dhikr. We are doing constant dua every night in qiyam, every night before we break the fast. And so in this month of Ramadan, one of the gym routines we are doing, one of the repetitions we're doing is the repetition of increasing the rituals. If we can worship Allah two, three, four hours a day nonstop, we're praying and we're doing qiyam and whatnot, surely when Ramadan is over, we can also raise the bar. So this is point number four. In Ramadan, we raise the bar of our rituals. Point number five, brothers and sisters, of the essence of taqwa, and our Prophet called it the Ra'sul Amr, or the, the, the crux of the matter, is to be patient, to have sabr. Sabr and Iman go hand in hand. Sabr and taqwa go hand in hand. And what does Ramadan do if it doesn't teach you sabr? Ramadan teaches you to be patient. What is patience? To not act when you want to act. What is patience? When an emotion comes, you control it. So what is Ramadan? The emotion of hunger comes. The emotion of anger comes. And what did our Prophet ﷺ say? If somebody curses you, gets angry at you when you're fasting, say, Allahumma inni sa'im, control that. So, Ramadan, Siyam, it trains you on sabr. And sabr is the quintessential pillar of being a muttaqi and having iman. Therefore, one mechanism of increasing our taqwa is via that of sabr. Point number six, brothers and sisters, you shall never attain taqwa if you are constantly greedy. Greed destroys piety. When you're always wanting more, 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 you're never going to be muttaqi. So what does fasting do? Be content with what you have. Be content with whatever is there. It lowers your greed, even for food and drink. You had your suhoor and khalas, that's it. You are not even wanting food and drink until sunsets. You are controlling your desire even for the halal. And you're being content with what you have. 
and you see other people, people of other faiths, they're eating and drinking. And Alhamdulillah, we don't even feel jealous. We're like, Alhamdulillah, we're fasting. We have something better than their food and lunch. We have something better than what they're doing now. This is the essence of taqwa. When you are content with what Allah has given you. And Iman and Sabr uh, and Ramadan, excuse me, teaches you to be content. And when you are content, then Alhamdulillah, you will attain the highest point of piety. And the seventh and last point, brothers and sisters, the seventh and last point, of the essence of having taqwa is to enjoy the worship of Allah more than you enjoy the pleasures of this dunya. You will never have taqwa and you will never master having piety until you genuinely enjoy the worship of Allah more than you enjoy the pleasures of this dunya. And in the month of Ramadan, every one of us enjoys the sweetness of fasting more than we enjoy the sweetness of food. We enjoy having accomplished something. We enjoy the spiritual peace that comes from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from controlling our desires, from servitude to Allah. The joy we obtain in our hearts, the peace we feel in the servitude of Allah, we recognize this dunya can never give it to us. Every one of you, how do you feel when you break your fast? You feel you've accomplished something. I did something today. I did something that gives me a sense of humility and pride. Alhamdulillah, I've accomplished something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That joy, that sakina, you appreciate what it means to be a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no pleasure that is more permanent and more fulfilling than the pleasure of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every other pleasure of this dunya, it comes with a negative side effect. It comes with something that is also not pleasurable. Every single pleasure of this dunya, it is not pure, it is not permanent. Even the halal pleasures, they go away. As for the pleasure of worshiping Allah, it is 100% pure and its effects are permanent. And in this month of Ramadan, every one of us is reintroduced to that pleasure of being a servant of Allah, the sweetness of Iman. You know what our Prophet Sallallahu called it? Hadith is in Bukhari. He said, -imani. The one has tasted the sweetness of faith who believes in Allah and who is content with Allah as his Lord. He called it the sweetness of faith. Iman. Iman has a taste and that taste is sweetness. In another hadith, he literally called it halawatul iman, literally the halawa of iman. In Ramadan, we all are reintroduced to the halawa of iman. And the goal is therefore when Ramadan finishes, we want to just like an addict, what does the addict do? He wants to always have that addiction. Well, there is a halal addiction. That halal addiction, the sweetness of worshiping Allah. When Ramadan is over and we know how sweet that is, we should increase and we should do our worship outside of this month so that we can maintain that sweetness as well. These are some of the mechanisms, brothers and sisters, of how fasting taps in to the potential of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this month to be a perfect month for us. May Allah azza wa jal accept our fast and forgive our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and he may make us of those whose verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness to you as well. Ask him for his the Ghafoor and the Rahman.